It's not surprising anymore, but it's still worth our attention when Donald Trump praises authoritarian leaders. Well, this time it's Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban. The two met yesterday in Florida where Trump said, quote, there's nobody better, smarter or a better leader than Orban. Now, let's be clear. Orban is an authoritarian seeking to turn his country into what he himself calls an illi illiberal democracy. Former CIA director and senior national security intelligence analyst John Brennan joins us now. Welcome, sir. It seems like Donald Trump has a new boo. And his name is Victor. Uh, I'm wondering what happened to Putin, but uh, I'll leave that to the folks in intelligence to figure out. How do you see this moment where a former president entertaining someone like a Victor Orban and sort of setting in motion um, efforts to sort of mimic that, uh, that type of governance leadership here in the United States? Well, again, we're talking about Donald Trump, so it's unsurprising in many respects. Donald Trump has a tremendous affinity for individuals that are made in his own image and likeness, which is corrupt, unprincipled, self-centered, mm -hmm. and able to exploit an environment in order to advance their own personal agendas. And therefore, Viktor Orban, who has done this for the past 14 years inside of Hungary, in terms of suppressing any type of political opposition, being able to corrupt the whole political system and the economy and the business system there as well. So I think Viktor Orban is, his, uh, is Donald Trump's, you know, uh, idol and also <laughs> his, his self-reflection. Right. And this is something that I think Donald Trump very much uh, admires. I, you know, it was uh, Victor Orban did his own State of the Union address on February 17th, and he says a lot in there. But one of the things he notes is we cannot interfere in other countries' elections. But we, re but we would very much like to see President Donald Trump return to the White House and make peace here in the eastern half of Europe. In when Victor Orban is talking about peace in the eastern half of Europe, thanks to Donald Trump, I I, I don't think he is talking about you know. Pre protecting Ukraine's sovereignty and ensuring that, you know, Vladimir Putin is, uh, does not succeed in Ukraine. No, Viktor Orban, along with Vladimir Putin and others, would like to see the United States recede from its global responsibilities, be able to not fulfill its NATO responsibilities and obligations. And therefore, I think seeing Donald Trump as the candidate in the U.S. presidential election, this is something that the Viktor Orbans, Vladimir Putins, and others would like, because they do not, do not see the United States as being somebody, a country that is able to advance their own interests. And therefore, again, Donald Trump, given his his uh, his experience, uh, lack of experience, really, and, and given what he has done, did in his first term of office, they see him as the ideal U.S. president, because it will allow these authoritarian leaders to do what they want, you know, in their in their regions. And Vladimir Putin obviously is, is counting on, on uh, Donald Trump to be re-elected re uh, in order to advance his interests in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Not just Ukraine, even beyond that. Mm -hmm. Forgive me. Director Brennan, will you help me understand the Biden administration's decision that they will give Donald Trump these, these briefings? Because, one, you have the issue of Donald Trump having retained classified information and shared that classified information in the past. And then you also have the issue that he remains close with some global leaders. This um, Trump retains close ties with foreign leaders, including Israel's Benjamin Netanyahu, and could use the information to support them or advance his own interests. Trump once spilled details of a highly classified classified Israel intelligence operation to senior Russian officials in the Oval Office. In another case, he tweeted a picture taken by a classified spy satellite. Your sense of the Biden administration's thinking here? Well, the Biden administration is not going to provide Donald Trump anything like those documents that were in Mar-a-Lago's bathrooms and, or those satellite photography. I think there's a lot of misunderstanding Please. here about this issue. Um, for the past 70 years, sitting U.S. presidents have offered to presidential candidates basically a high-level intelligence briefing used, uh, would take place after the national conventions, either Democrat or Republican. These are very high-level, wave-top briefings about some hot spots that go on around the world to make sure that the inco possible incoming president has an appreciation and understanding of some of these developments globally. But they don't get into source and methods, not just with Donald Trump, but with any other presidential candidate. They, they do it at a high level. It's analysis, it's assessments, it's the type of things that, uh, that we need to make sure that a person who may, in fact, be in the White House has an appreciation and understanding of. Now, yes, Donald Trump is a very unique you know, individual who is unlike any other presidential candidate in the past. But I do think if the Biden administration denied that briefing to him, yes. it would just feed into Donald Trump's image of victimhood. 
and, and Donald Trump's claims that the Biden administration is working to undermine his candidacy. I think they can manage this. I think this is a real good example of what's the least of the worst options that are available to them. They will provide the briefings. Again, it's going to be high level. It's not going to be revealing sources and methods. And no, uh, no briefing to a presidential candidate would get into that type of detail. It, again, is going to go do around the world type of uh, an analysis, something akin to what uh, intelligence officers do with Congress every year in the worldwide threat briefings. Is there a way to track that information flow? For example, um, you know, those briefings are given to him and, and then there's some way to kind of manage how that, you know, not just what's in the briefing, but then what he does with that, with that information. Is that just totally within his purview once he gets the briefing? I mean, is it all documents? Is it verbal? I mean, how does that process unfold? Because you've got folks out there like even John Bolton who are sitting there scratching their heads going, why would you do this given this guy's propensity? You know, he doesn't pay adequate attention uh, as it is to uh, the specifics and the necessary uh, importance of these secrets. Um, and to give it to someone who has a propensity, mm -hmm. has already shown a propensity to want to share that information, as you pointed out, Alicia, um, I hear what you're saying, Mr. Director, but there's, there's still this thing in my gut that goes, you're dealing with Donald Trump here, who has no, gives no regard or value to our nation's secrets if it helps him with Viktor Orban, Vladimir Putin, and mm -hmm. other bad actors across the, the globe. They're not going to give Donald Trump any documents. It's going to be an oral briefing. Okay. And so, for example, they'll talk about the obstacles to trying to find a way toward peace in the Middle East. What are the obstacles to a two-state solution? What are the interests, the concerns on the part of Hamas, Israel, other regional actors? That type of analysis mm -hmm. so that an individual has an appreciation for some mm -hmm. of those developments that are taking place, I don't think there's, again, a risk. Uh, and I participated in some of these briefings in the past. They're not going to get down into the type of details right. or how we know something, a specific inf information. So they're not going to be able to track, and they will not track what Donald Trump does with it. But again, it's the analysis. It's probably one level lower than a New York Times, you know, front page piece about what's happening in Ukraine and okay. China and the Middle East. So it, it's something that I think, again, the Biden administration looking at what their options were. I do think this is the best decision that they've made. That they could make on this one, because again, if they denied it, it would just lead to m more outrage on the part of of not just Donald Trump but his, his supporters. And they're offering this briefing to the nominee of the Republican Party. Granted, it's not the Republican Party, Michael, that you were part of years ago, <laughs> right. but it is the nominee for the Republican Party, right. one of the two parties of the, in the United States right. uh, political system. Okay, I, I feel somewhat better. Thank you.